Hello, this is Chris Neal from South Plains College. Welcome back to my Pro Tools how-to video series. The following video is part one of three on setting up effects in Pro Tools for a surround mix. In part one, we will be looking at setting up a mono in, mono out reverb, a stereo in, stereo out reverb, and looking at the difference between multi-channel and multi-mono. So this is just a quick video three-part series on how to set up some effects, sends and returns in Pro Tools. We're not going to get into justifications on why you should use a certain type of a setup or anything like that. We'll cover those things in class. So this is just technically how to set some things up. First thing we need to do is we'll start simple and we will start with a mono in, mono out reverb. So I've got this electric guitar over here and I'm going to go to Ascend and choose new track. I'm gonna choose uh, create a mono aux input track. I will name it F Reverb M Room 1 and then click on create. Okay, here we are. Close this in for just a second. So first thing we need to do is in Insert a plugin, so we'll grab reverb. You can see I have, I have quite a few reverbs here, several surround in the list, but we'll uh, pick out something that uh, we all have access to. So I'll choose um, Revibe Mono. So this is a mono reverb. I don't want to create a stereo output, so I choose the Revibe Mono. And we'll choose a preset. We'll go to Chambers. and choose medium chamber one. Not that it really matters at this point, but that's what we chose here. So we need to set the output. So since the guitars are going to S sub M left, right, I will choose that. However, we'll look at some other options in a minute. So um, open back up my send. We'll solo isolate the return. So again, we instantiated the reverb plugin input and output set. Okay, so let's hear what we've got going here. You know, solo that up and send it to the reverb. We have a couple different options. Um, with this type of reverb, we might pan it to the exact same location and kind of wrap the reverb around the instrument that we're sending to that reverb. So that's one option uh, for a mono, or we might pan it to the opposite location, which can be cool, although it creates a non-realistic acoustic environment uh, to pan the reverb away from the instrument. So, a couple different options there. So one more option before we move on with this mono is we could route it to the quad. Uh, again, if we were, I don't know, if we maybe we wanted to, instead of just uh, sending that reverb to the opposite side of where the instrument was, we could route it to the back, so kind of caddy corner to where the instrument was instead of just on the right hand side. So uh, again, unrealistic environments, but we could put it uh, to the back right or the back left, just as some different options for panning that if we had it routed to the quad. Okay, let's look at some stereo options. So if I wanted to create a similar effect as to what I was doing just a minute ago with the mono, but on these two electric guitars that are panned to the left and right of my stereo image, I'm gonna select both tracks, hold down Option Shift, and I'm gonna say New Track, and I'm gonna create a stereo uh, aux input track, name it F Reverb S Room 2. I'm just putting the number on there um, just because we're doing a few little reverbs here. So hit Create. And uh, there we go. So there it appears there in between. So let me uh, do a little rearranging here and move it to the side so we just get it to the right of those two aux, I mean, of those two audio tracks. So let's look at the difference between multi channel and multi mono uh, and how that affects uh, a reverb, for example. So we'll start with multi channel. So we'll go into the reverb and we will again find Revibe. And under this category of multi-channel, we will find Revibe Stereo. We will choose that and uh, we'll load up uh, again a chamber preset. So we go to chambers, medium chamber one. 
Okay, I have this arranged here so we can see everything. We have the two tracks, we have the sins over there. So we go into play. Let's solo safe this and solo up these tracks here. And I'll send guitar one to the reverb. And you can see, even though I'm sending to just the left side of the reverb, it's generating output on the reverb on both sides, on both left and right. Again, simulating a real world acoustic environment. So if I turn on the other one, send it to the right channel, we might be able to hear a slight difference between that uh, based on the early reflections and how well the reverb algorithm creates those early reflections. But based on this plugin and this uh, preset, there won't be a whole lot of difference between having the guitars pan to the same side and opposite sides of where the instrument is located. So again, like reverb in the real world, we're going to hear, even if we're panning to just one side of the reverb, we'll hear reverb out of both sides. So let's look at multi-mono. And again, we'll go to find Revibe, but we see a mono version. We'll go reload the preset, even though it, it did remain. So with a multi-mono, we have this section up here, and we have a left and right. It's two mono versions of the same plugin. So I can option click on that menu there where it said L and R, and that will open up both versions of the plugin. So again, instead of it being one stereo version, it's two mono versions. And we will hear a very big difference between them. So if I play just this one guitar, you notice how I have it panned to the right, and we can see signal on the right reverb, but there's no signal generating coming in or going out of the other side. So again, when I move that pan to the left, you see that same thing happen where we see signal on the left reverb, but nothing on the right reverb. So this creates, an again, an unrealistic environment. It's kind of like if I had that mono reverb and I panned it to the opposite side. So if I pan to the right reverb, but my instrument is panned to the left, I'm going to generate reverb on the right, no reverb on the left. In a multi-channel reverb, it's going to generate reverb on both sides because that's how... Uh, reverb works in the real world in a real ac uh, acoustic environment. Okay, we should have had this uh, routed to bus S sub M left right in this scenario, but main out was the same in this scenario. But So we could also route this one to left surround, right surround if we were using it on some instruments in the surround, or if we wanted to have the reverb in the surrounds and the instruments pan, pan forward. We could also route it to the quad, and we would get the quad panner. And if we move that pan... Um, for example, to the middle, so it's coming kind of equally out of both sides. We're getting left-right information as much as there is in this uh, in this reverb. We have the multi-mono version loaded up right now, but um, but we don't really have any front to back, so it's not surround reverb uh, because the algorithm doesn't generate surround reverb. We have basically the same thing coming out of the left front and the left surround. Uh, as far as the reverb is concerned. So it's kind of like a, a mono reverb panned to the left and the right. It still sounds like a mono reverb coming right out of the middle. So it would sound the same as far as uh, the left side and the right side it would just sound mono. But we would be getting reverb out of all four channels. Okay, let's look at one more little option. I'm going to create two stereo aux input tracks. And... Um, I'm going to call them F Reverb Room Front and Room Rear. So I'm going to create a stereo reverb for up front. So I have my drums kind of panned up front. Uh, for the most part, I have a, a room mic in the surrounds. Uh, but, you know, what if I don't have a surround reverb and we want to use something nicer like the Altiverb? Um, I can load up uh, the Altiverb and I can find a patch that I'm happy with for the front and kind of get it the way I want. Uh, and then I can duplicate that onto the back and make some adjustments to that patch a little bit to give it a little bit of a different character uh, in the surrounds. Uh, and, you know, maybe I'm adjusting the pre-delay and the EQ a little bit to kind of make it feel like it's um, a little different sound to that reverb and, and, and the distance from the listener is, is different from the front. So that's kind of what I've got set up here. Again, just a, an example of how you might utilize a better reverb that does not have a surround option for you.
So we'll talk about that technique in class a little bit more. Uh, no reason playing it here. We're this video is not in surround. Part two coming up, we'll look at quad and uh, 5.0 setups.